I'd like to say good evening to everyone. Evening. I'd like to welcome you all to the Syracuse School, Branch School. And this um, is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organizations. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational religious and scientific research organization that is dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim, and the operation of, of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, the state of Ohio, in the year 1931. Um, since that time, we have established branch schools throughout the United States, Canada, and other foreign countries. The Syracuse branch was established in 1969. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge the Dean of the Syracuse branch, Dr. Patrick Trevison, their president, Dr. Robert Welch, and their vice president, Dr. John Cometti. Now, in this school and throughout the lecture this evening, we'll be using the true, correct, and original name and title for the Father, the Word, or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. This has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. For the word or son, we use the divine title Elohim. This has been improperly substituted with the title God. And the name of the Holy Spirit manifesting in or out of a physical body is Yahshua the Messiah. This has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. We now know each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title, which means Elohim is the title that your Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it's an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into an encyclopedia or dictionary would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language contain any character in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by the letter J. Neither was there a J in the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah, therefore making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true name of the Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Now, Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, is pure spirit. And in this pure spirit state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds. I don't think you can see this chart really good here. He's source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything in creation. We have Yahweh depicted on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. If you take a look at this chart, you'll see that we have this fiery cloud painted all the way around the edges of the chart so that everything on the chart abides within the cloud in like manner. Everything in the universe abides within this pure spirit state of Yahweh. And Yahweh, knowing that man cannot pursue of him in this pure spirit state, takes on shape and takes on form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. This is the Word or Son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This visionary shape and form can only be seen by divine vision and only understood by divine revelation. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a phys physical body, walked the earth plane as Yahshua Messiah, whom the world has come to know erroneously as Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time that he did walk the earth plane? You can get a better understanding of his name and title by reading a preface to a Holy Name Bible. Now, also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. We call it a divine pattern because this is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt and into the wilderness of Sinai, he then called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and revealed this tabernacle pattern to him in a vision. Moses was instructed to return to the wilderness and build one exactly as he had seen in the mount. This tabernacle pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place in the court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. And in this school, we show proof how that everything is made and operates according to the structure and function 
of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now, in this school, we have 10 primary constitutional aims or objectives, and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, compared to religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua Messiah. And tenth, is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. I'd like to have this evening's meeting dedicated with a prayer by Dr. Michael Colucci. That'll be followed by a scripture reading, which is Romans, the third chapter. Our scripture readers this evening are Dr. Scott Miller and Dr. Deb Kometty. Thank you. Just take a moment and... <coughs> Prayer to our Heavenly Father Yahshua and uh, thank Him for everything and this teaching and that we might learn something of Him. Uh, we're very, very thankful. We're thankful to be gathering here and to be able to focus on you, you know, through the law and the prophets, like we were taught, and uh, every little, every little piece of the puzzle is important. And just thank you for the mountains of information. And I, and I don't even use a computer, and I just have mountains of information. Uh, it, it covers me, and and uh, you know to have that stuff at home, you know when I'm not at class, and I, I'm just so thankful that he 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 allows me to focus on him. Uh, it's just overwhelming almost at times. It, it's just it's really there's so much stuff, and even if we just take it one step at a time, you know it's so beautiful, you know when you can. Um, when he gives us the uh, ability, you know, even when we're at home, especially here tonight, because we're here together in his name, you know, but whenever he gives us that ability, uh, I, I, I am just, I, w I would just like to say thank you and praise Yahshua. Yeah. Oh, yes. Class. <clears throat> Tonight's scripture will be read out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically comparing with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by A.B. Traina of the Scripture Research Association. Romans, the third chapter. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of Yahweh. For what if some did not believe, 
Shall their unbelief make the faith of Yahweh without effect? By no means. Yea, let Yahweh be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But if our, righteous, if our unrighteousness commend the righteous of Yahweh, what shall we say? Is Yahweh unrighteous, who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. By no means, for then how shall he judge the world? For if the truth of Yahweh hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, yet I am also judged as a sinner. And why not, as we be slanderously reported, as some affirm that we say, Let us do evil, that, may, that good may come, whose dam damnation is just. What then, are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and other nations that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is, not, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after Elohim. They are all gone out of the way, they are all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre, with their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of adders is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and deceit. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of Elohim before their eyes. Now we know what things soever saith the law, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may be become guilty before Yahweh. Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of Yahweh without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of Yahweh, which is by faith of Yahshua the Messiah, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Yahshua the Messiah, whom Yahweh has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past, through the forbearance of Yahweh, to declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Yahshua. Where is the boasting then? Is it excluded? By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the Elohim of the Jews only? Is he not also of other nations? Yes, of other nations also, seeing it is one Elohim which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? By no means, yea, we establish the law. That's Romans, the third chapter. Thank you, Dr. Colucci and Dr. Miller. And our first speaker this evening, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Bill Warren. Good evening, class. Good evening. <clears throat> That was a surprise. Um, well, I'd first like to echo the prayer, because I am very happy to be here, and very happy to be in an in-person class, which is not There's, there's a lot of classes that haven't had an in-person class in, since pandemic. Mm -hmm. What's that? Like going on four years? Mm -hmm. So I'm really appreciative to be here. I'm appreciative of all of you because if we didn't all come, we wouldn't have in-person class either. Mm -hmm. And 
I don't know about you, but I, I think the last few classes, well, all of them are <laughs> very, very good, but the last few has just been really good. Um, well, why don't we just start reading in the scripture and see where it goes. Uh, Romans 3 and 1. <clears throat> what advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of Yahweh. For what if some did not believe? Yeah, so that you, you, you stop. What advantage hath the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? So it's talking, and when was this? This is after Pentecost, right? This is so this AD, is AD 60. AD 60. So it's, and this is Paul talking to a class at Rome. And uh, talking about circumcision. Actually, the previous uh, chapter talks about circumcision as well. And we talk about circumcision, but um, it's kind of like, where do you start? Because <laughs> really, you got to go back and show everything that's led up to this and, wh and why he's, he's talking like this. Because he, he chose Israel way back, way back before Israel even existed. Uh, he chose them in... Uh, in Abraham, and he said, uh, "And um, why don't we get that in Genesis? Uh, uh, is it fifteen? Where a seed would go down? Um, <clears throat> Genesis fifteen. 13. 13. 13 and 13 he said unto Abram know of a surety that thy seed shall be a sojourner in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them for 400 years and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge and afterwards shall they come out with great substance so his promise to Abraham back then I mean this was part of it he also said that he would make him a uh, well, might as well get that 12 and 3, maybe. Um, Genesis 12 yeah. and 1. And Yahweh had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee all families of the earth shall be blessed. So all families would be blessed in his seed, um, mm -hmm. and his seed would go down into a nation, into a place they knew not of, and be evilly entreated for some 400 years. Sounds like a heck of a promise, doesn't it? You're going to have a seed, and they're going to go be slaves down here, basically. But see, this whole thing is, is going by a pattern, this tabernacle pattern that he gave to Israel after he brought them up out of the land of Egypt, that he actually gave to Moses and had Moses build here in the wilderness of Sinai. See, all of this, the importance of understanding what happened before what Paul is talking about, is to, to show, well, to show Yahweh's purpose and to show there's, within the tabernacle, there's a, there's a priesthood operating and there's a court round about a holy place and a most holy place. And once a year, the, the uh, high priest would go up into the most holy place and receive um, 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 uh, atonement atonement for all of Israel uh, and then he would have to come back down and service down here throughout the year but see where this really starts is like with Yahweh 
because all of this is to show Yahweh and his purpose. Uh, let's get John 1 and 1. <clears throat> Dry mouth. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh. So in the beginning, read that again. In, <clears throat> in the beginning was the Word. Was the Word. And the Word was with Yahweh. And, and the, the word, word was with Yahweh. And the Word was Yahweh. And the Word was Yahweh. So, and the way Doc explained it is, Yahweh in his pure spirit form condescended or came down into a lower state of existence as Yahweh Elohim or the word like this is saying and it was actually Yahweh that came down in this form now it didn't take all of Yahweh pure spirit to come down in this form so in part he took on this shape and form as Yahweh Elohim and this word was with Yahweh pure spirit and this word, this anthropomorphic being, was Yahweh manifested in this form. Read. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. All things were made by him. See, all things were made by him. And the way Doc described it is that Yahweh, he called this the work of Yahweh. This was the beginning of the work of Yahweh that he was taken on this shape and form as Yahweh Elohim. And at that point he said, Yahweh, pure spirit, went out of business. Mm -hmm. So now this, uh, this form, Yahweh Elohim, he created all things. That's what this is talking about. Read that again. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So he, in this form, is the creator of the universe. Not only the creator of the universe, but the creator of the uh, angelic creation as well. He created the angelic creation first, and then the physical creation. Read. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. In him was life. This was the only life that was to be had, and this life was, the. how does it say it, the life of the light of men. And this life was the light of men. Or in other words, it's the spirit of Elohim that actually causes each and every man, but every living thing actually, to be animate. Uh, go ahead. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from Yahweh whose name was John. You could jump down to uh, 14. Verse 14. And the Word was made flesh. And, and this well, Word, who is Yahweh, who was with Yahweh and was Yahweh, this Word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. And dwelt among us. We beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. So this is how our Creator exists. Yahweh, pure spirit. Yahweh, Elohim, a visionary, anthropomorphic, that just means man-like, shape and form, who is a, a, a lower existence of Yahweh himself. And then he, in like manner, took on shape and form, in part, as Yahshua the Messiah in the flesh. Um, now, uh, knowing that this is the one Yahweh Elohim that appeared to Abraham and gave those promises that his seed, the seed of Abraham and he was up here in this area at the time and he said that his seed would go down into a land that they knew not of and be evilly entreated so you can see, just like the priesthood, how that high priest, when, once he serviced and achieved uh, atonement up here in the most holy place, had to come down. So here's Abraham's seed had to come down to Egypt. And it said, um, it says over there in Deuteronomy 
7 or 8 how he chose Israel? So you can see it operating by this tabernacle pattern is a thing that God, the Godhead or supernal nature of Yahweh, Yahweh pure spirit likened unto the most holy place, Yahweh Elohim, the word uh, like the holy place, and Yahshua the Messiah uh, in a, a physical form like this court roundabout. Go ahead. Uh, Deuteronomy 7 and 6, for thou art a holy people unto Yahweh the Elohim. Yahweh the Elohim hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. See, he chose them. And it, and it sounds like, you know, he looked at all the peoples and, oh, I chose them. But he chose them before they even existed, way back here in Abraham. So there wasn't anything great about Israel. As a matter of fact, go ahead. Yahweh yeah, did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number. They didn't choose, he didn't choose them because they were great. He mm. chose them, well, go ahead. Uh, for you were the fewest of all people. But because Yahweh loved you, and because he... But because he loved you, he set his love upon them, way back there with Abraham. See, let's get Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Isaiah 46 and 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am Yahweh and there's none else. I'm Yahweh and there's none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, see, go ahead, I'm sorry. My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. And he's able, not able, but he causes it. He declares the end right from the beginning because he is uh, go ahead and keep reading there calling a ravenous bird from the east the man that executeth my counsel from a far country yea I have spoken it I will also bring it to pass See, I have spoken it I will also bring it to pass read I will also do it Oh, wait a minute, sorry. I have purposed it. I, have I will also do it. I have purposed it. I will also do it. So, see, there's a purpose going on here. And it's something I didn't have a clue of right. before coming into this class. I, didn't, I wouldn't have cared if you did tell me back then. Mm -hmm. I didn't care when they told me about class. It took, uh, what, I mean, probably months, over a period of months, I think mm -hmm. I came to two classes it was like at picnics or something mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and uh Karen was all excited that I was going <laughs> but then she was all concerned because oh they said they weren't going to have class uh, is he okay with this you know and it's like I said and it's like eh. right eh. right you know no big deal but I don't I don't know exactly when it was um but <laughs> One thing I do remember for sure is when we were on our way to Baltimore, which is where I started class. Um, I, even though I had been to class before that, I don't consider that starting class because I, I really didn't care. Mm -hmm. I didn't care, you know, yay or nay. It didn't, yeah. it didn't matter. Yeah. But when we were on our way to Baltimore, I knew that that's... And, I knew because he put it in me, no other reason, because I wouldn't have chose it. But I knew that's where I was going to start class and it was going to be a full commitment. Mm. I, I'm glad he did it that way. He made it pretty painless, you know, <laughs> really, you know. Uh, yep. It's just, OK, now I like this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's impossible to like it. You can't do that yourself. He's got to put it in you. He's got to put it in you. He's got to put it in you to like it. He's got to put it in you to understand it or to even hear as far as that goes, to hear or see anything. Yes. It, it takes him to put it in you to do that. Yes. Uh, where were we? Um, we just read okay. Isaiah. Right, Isaiah 40. So I have purposed it. I will also, also do it. Mm -hmm. So he formulated this pur purpose as he took on this shape and form as Yahweh Elohim. And that's why Dr. Kinley declares it that 
he went out of business because this one from here on it, it was passed off to him and it sounds like it's separate but it's not so that's the confusing thing it it's not him in this form but it's him in this form so this isn't going on this is he is creating the creation and controlling all aspects of the purpose going forward from that point so that's why when he went to Abraham, he could say, I'm, uh, I promise you that your seed is going to go down. That wasn't a maybe. That was, that's what his purpose is, is to show how his seed went down into Egypt, was evilly entreated some 400 years, and right on time, he, he sent Moses down to, I'll say it this way, to deliver them up out of Egypt, but it wasn't Moses that did it. It was Yahweh Elohim that did this. It was by the hand of Moses. But that's also why Moses didn't make it up into uh, Canaan's land. Um, that he was, he was uh, uh, cut short. He's not the one that did it. Right. It makes that clear. Mm -hmm. So now Israel goes down into Egypt, is brought up, and... Um, Let's get uh, Exodus 9.16. Exodus 9 and 16. And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up, for to show in thee my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. So this is the reason that he raised Israel up out of Egypt. They were, they were slaves to the most powerful man on earth, or some people called him a god on earth, Pharaoh down here. And he raised them up out of there so that his name might be declared throughout all the earth. And what was that? Yahweh. Right? Yes. That, that is the name of Elohim. It's Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel. Yes. So he brings them up out of, out of Egypt. Uh, the whole world hears that. And I mean, that's why it seems like every place has something to do, uh, some opinion of the Jews. Because, I mean, you would think, how, how would everybody know? So, such a small nation. And such big goings on right now. And this tiny little strip of, what is it? Just a couple of miles long, I think. And uh, so much world attention is on that now. It's, it's all because Yahweh chose them. And this is where he raised them up, manifest salvation to the Jews. Uh, they had to spend time in the wilderness. And uh, in the beginning of that time, Moses went up into the mountain and got this tabernacle pattern, and Yahweh Elohim told him to build it in the wilderness. So that, because the other thing that he did up here was give him a law. And Moses came down and read the law to the people, and what did the people say? All that Yahweh has said, we will do. So this was uh, really kind of as a, a marriage between Israel and Yahweh Elohim. So, um, so he built this tabernacle here so that when, not if, and it talked about that in the third chapter of Romans here, when Israel sinned, they would be killed according to the law unless they brought an innocent sacrifice that could be sacrificed in their stead. And this was all really to point up Yahshua the Messiah, the one true sacrifice, true innocent, true being he was the truth manifest in the flesh. Uh, so, so this existed for some 1,500 years until it ran its course because all of this was just um, a type and a shadow. This, this uh, tabernacle was a type and a shadow showing how Yahweh Elohim was the true archetype original pattern of the universe and that he created the whole creation by this pattern and all the operations 
in that exist are by this pattern as well. It's it's amazing. So um, so th this. This law that he gave was to Israel alone. That was the seed that he talked about with, uh, with Abraham. It was to, to Israel. And yet, what was the other part of the promise? That all the nations of the world would be blessed in his seed. So as long as this stood, this was a standard for righteousness. Uh, let's, let's get that... Um, Deuteronomy 6, 25, I think. Deuteronomy 6, 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before Yahweh our Elohim as he hath commanded us. And it would be our righteousness if we did all of this law. Nobody could do it. Mm -mm. None of the Jews could do it. Nobody actually in the whole world could do it. Um, and that is why this was really to be temporary. It was to show that um, righteousness couldn't be attained unto by works of a law. And if you look at literally any religion in the world, they're all doing some kinds of works to attain unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. The whole world. Mm -hmm. uh, so really you could kind of look at it, they're, they're all the liars that was talked about in Romans, the third chapter. Mm -hmm. They're all lies. They're all taking bits and pieces of this thing and using it the way they want to most of the religions I worked at was to control the people and to get money from the people. Really. I mean, that's the way it is. And the, the whole thing, but the whole thing was really just to show that Israel couldn't keep this law. And so then there was, there was to be an end to this. And that end was Yahshua the Messiah. Now, remember, we talked about Yahweh Elohim in the word, it was Yahweh Elohim that took on shape and form in part as Yahshua the Messiah, right? So he comes in to finish this. Well, the reason it had to be him is this law that was given. Within that law, um, let's see. Within that law, if a husband heard his wife vow a vow and the wife didn't keep it, then the husband was responsible to keep it. So remember, all of these things go back and pertain directly to Yahweh Elohim. And remember how we talked about uh, uh, Israel saying all that you said we will do? Well, that was a marriage ceremony and he was the husband and this was the bride. So, she vowed a vow saying that she would do it. What happened? They began sinning or violating that law immediately mm -hmm. and continually for some 1,500 years. Mm -hmm. But again, this was temporary to show that they couldn't keep it and they needed something better. So, the husband is now responsible to keep this. Mm -hmm. So, he takes on a shape and a form and what does Yahshua come d and do when he's walking in the flesh? He's doing all the aspects of this law. Not to keep them, not to show Christians what they got to do to be righteous, but to finish. Let's, let's get something on that. Hmm? Yeah, Matthew 5, 17, 18. Maybe one other one. 10, 5, 39. 10, 5, 39, yeah. Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. See, so Yahshua comes in and, um, uh, what is it, the scribes and the Pharisees are having a little kind of uh, 
will war with uh, with Yahshua. I mean, they're finding fault because they didn't like he, he's usurping some of their control. Right. And it's like, whoa. And how would you usurp, uh, usurp somebody's control that you was using a, uh, a covenant to control people? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're taking away our control. Because mm -hmm. he's, he's, you know, dealing with this, uh, the, the uh, law that was given down. Do, do you have another one here? John 5, 36, but I have greater witness than that of John for the works which the Father hath given me to finish. See, the, the works, works. That, that the Father hath given me to finish, what works are those? All the works of the law that Israel had to keep and none of them could keep. See, he's going to come in and keep them, but not, not to establish them like the world thinks. Because they all take this law and some form of it and all different aspects of it and turn it into their own religion. I mean, even just the Christian religion, there's thousands and thousands of different uh, sects of uh, Christianity. You know, anytime anybody has a problem with something uh, in this church they're going to, they say, well, let's start another church that doesn't have that one. And it has this stuff over here. And... I mean, that's basically what uh, what Catholicism did with, um, you know, all of our uh, our holidays, <laughs> uh, you know, Christmas and all that stuff. They adopted those things to get people to come in. Uh, they're all wrong. wrong. They're all lies. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead. Mm hmm. But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me bear, that the Father has sent me. Bear witness of Yahshua that he's been sent by Yahweh Elohim. Mm -hmm. Those same works. That's, uh, um, it's, it's kind of hard to argue with that because when you look at the things that he's doing, they're the things that he spoke in the law. Uh, mm -hmm. But what they don't get, because they don't really have an understanding, not at all, even though they were the chosen, he, um, you would think that the chosen would have some knowledge and understanding of the Creator, but it was only from a physical standpoint. Um, uh, there was a scripture I was thinking of. Oh, Deuteronomy uh, 29. <laughs> The secret things? Uh, one through four, I think, mm -hmm. isn't it? We didn't give them the ears to hear. Yeah. You want, so 29 and one? Oh, I'm sorry. You mm -hmm. probably just four. I think he said one through four. Okay. Uh, Deuteronomy 29 and one. These are the words of the covenant which Yahweh commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab, beside the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. And Moses called unto all Israel and said unto them, Ye have seen all that Yahweh did before our eyes in the land of Egypt unto Pharaoh, and unto all his servants, and unto all his land. So they, they witnessed all these things firsthand. You would think they should know a little bit about what's going on. Mm -hmm. Read. The great temptations which thine eyes have seen, the signs and those great miracles. Yet Yahweh hath not given you a heart to perceive, and eyes to see, and ears to hear, unto this day. Is there more? Is that it? It does say about the 40 years in the wilderness. Oh, that's right. Read the last one again, then. Okay. Uh, this is Deuteronomy 29 and 4. Yet Yahweh hath not given you a heart to perceive. Hasn't given him a heart to perceive. Mm -hmm. And eyes to see. Eyes to see. And ears to hear. You know, eyes to see, like, you know how everybody says, oh, I see. And they're not talking about seeing something, but they're talking about seeing with the eye of their understanding. Mm -hmm. So you've got you've to see, you've got to hear mm -hmm. to be able to understand what's going on with Yahweh. But why couldn't they? Read that again. <laughs> yeah, Yahweh hath not given you a heart to perceive, and eyes to see, and ears to hear unto this day. Mm-hmm. So they couldn't understand this whatsoever. And what it requires, really, is what actually happened was Yahshua did all this law, but he did it in fulfillment, like we read there in, uh, did we read all that in Matthew mm -hmm. 5? 
Did we read 17 and 18? 17. Yeah, let's, let's go back and read that again, 17 and 18. Matthew 5 and 17 and 18. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you... See, now, he, he said, I, I've not come to destroy the law or the prophets, right? Mm -hmm. So, is he talking about this law? No. No, he's talking about uh, the book. He's talking about the first five... Right? That's the, that's, the, that's the law. And what's the prophets? The next 34, right? So he's, not, he's saying, I have not come to destroy the law and the prophets. And if you think about it, why would he? He is the manifestation of the law and the prophets. He's, he's doing all those things that were written in the first five books of Moses and the next 34 in the prophets. Those are the things that he wrote of him because it didn't Yahweh Elohim put his spirit in the prophets and have him write what they wrote? Mm -hmm. So he's actually then manifesting all those things that were written because it was written about himself. It was written about Yahshua the Messiah. Uh, go ahead. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So now, nothing will pass from the law, the first five books of the Bible? No. Now, he's shifted gears. He's talking about this law. Read that again. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. So nothing, the law is going to stand until every single 613 laws and ordinances be fulfilled by Yahshua the Messiah. And once that happens, what did he say? It's done. It's right? It's finished. It's All done. And that's, that was right, right here. Mm -hmm. And what happened shortly after that then? Something called Pentecost. Mm -hmm. So that was 50 days later, right? Mm -hmm. So right on time, 50 days later, this old covenant finished, and 50 days later, a new covenant came in. Uh, let's get that in Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold the days come, saith Yahweh, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. See, and I will with make the house a new Judah. covenant with the house of Israel. Read. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. Not according to this covenant. So if you look any place about this old covenant, it's not like any of that. Not like it at all. Because remember, this is a physical law given to a physical people. And in the end, Yahweh Elohim isn't looking for physical people. He's looking for souls. Not looking for them. He actually created them. They are His. Mm -hmm. But it, all this is done for our understanding. Like back here, He hadn't given them to, the eyes to see and the ears to hear. He has given us the eyes to see and the ears to hear. And He's given us gifts to discern what's true and what isn't true. Mm -hmm. Which you see none of in the world. I mean, the U.S., oh my gosh, it's unbelievable. I, I can't even say anything about that or I'll go off. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, did we have something holding? Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. Not, not according to the covenant, right? Go ahead. In the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke, Although I was a husband See, unto them. This, this covenant, they broke. Every single one of them. Mm -hmm. If one of them didn't break that, it would still be standing. But they all broke it, requiring that husband to come in, manifest in the flesh, 
to do it and finish it and take it out of their way. I mean, being in here the years that I have and being able to understand that, that is just an absolute phenomenal thing. Mm -hmm. A phenomenal thing. And trying to get somebody to see it that doesn't, <laughs> wow, yep. wow. A and when somebody does, you know you had nothing to do with it. It's, it's Yah, Yah, Elohim, or Yahshua opening the eyes of that person. Yes. Uh, go ahead. This shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their Elohim and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No Yahweh, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith Yahweh. Because he's going to put it in you. Right. Go ahead. I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Thus saith Yahweh, who gives the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, who divides the sea when it roar, waves roar, Yahweh of hosts is his name. If what he, verse again? This, I just read 35. 36, please. 36. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith Yahweh, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a, a nation before me forever. So now that's, if you think, we'll read that one more time. If those ordinances <clears throat> depart from before me, saith Yahweh, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. So now if you think about it, the Jews that can't see this thing. They see that written in the Bible. If this is done away with, then Israel ceases to be a nation. And of course, that's really talking about physical Israel. Because the whole thing has been switched now with him coming in and fulfilling all of these temporary things and bringing in this new covenant. He has, he's fulfilled all that. Um, that's what I was going to say. Just pick that up and read it again. Mm -hmm. 36. If those ordinances depart from before ah. me, saith Yahweh, then the seed of Israel also, also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. <laughs> right, so they're looking at it physically, and if he completes this, and that means they aren't the chosen anymore. That's, that's what Israel or the Jews have going for them, is we're the chosen. So they can't recognize that there was a Messiah that did away with this law. Otherwise they see, but little do they know, Israel isn't done. It just went from being physical. Now it's no longer a physical Jew, but a spiritual Jew, or one that Yahshua has put his Holy Spirit into. Mm -hmm. um, what, now let's go to uh, the end of the second chapter of Romans. 28, 29. Thanks. <clears throat> Romans 2 and 28. For he is a Jew. He, for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. See, so the, who's a, who's a Jew, which is one outwardly? Back here, or anybody that's still thinking that they got to do this thing, they're out there getting circumcised according to the law. Now I know there's a lot of circumcision done pretty commonly for health reasons now, but aside from that, there's still religions that you know this is a, this is still a thing. To get circumcised. Do I pick that up again? For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. Read. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly. See, so the circumcision now under this new covenant, not like the old, what was it under the old? Physical circumcision. And what was the idea of that? The principle is removing the flesh to reveal the head. Yes. Not to get graphic or anything, but what what happened here really it kind of goes back to Adam, where um, when he took of that fruit and died in his conscience, 
his eyes were closed to the spirit. Prior, prior to him taking that fruit, he was walking and talking with Yahweh, no problem. He took that fruit and he went and hid in the bushes and covered up and all kinds of stuff. Went out of the garden, you know, uh, shamefully. And um, his eyes were opened to the flesh. They were closed to the spirit, no longer walking and talking with Yahweh, and he was driven out of the garden, so he had to operate out in the outer court now, where he was right up in the garden where everything was there for him. Now he's got to go out and work his butt off. And, uh, and that's the way, see, he had to work. These guys had to work. Works didn't help. He brings in the new covenant. Now it's spiritual. He opens your eyes and your ears so you can see how he's operating, gives you gifts of discernment and all, all these things, all these things, really, and whether we recognize it or not. So, you know, we often recognize some, which is a good thing, but some we say, oh, not, not so much, but it's there. Yes. Um, so... Um, I mean, I, I, all of that I really said was just to um, talk about the first couple verses of uh, the, let's read the first couple verses of uh, Scripture reading. Okay, uh, Romans 3 and 1. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? See, now, you're thinking this way. There is no profit to it. No profit to being a Jew, no profit to having circumcision. Read. Much every way, chiefly because that... See, now here's I'm Paul with an understanding, says much every way. But you got to understand. Read. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of Yahweh. Now, what's oracles mean? It's... Words. The words. 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 Right. Yeah, He's, he, they were the nation that he was working with back here and going on the, into the New Covenant. The first Pentecost was to the Jews. So he's still working with the Jews. But then seven years later, he also brings in the Gentiles because he had to keep that promise made to Abraham that all nations would be blessed through his seeds. See, because it's not about the flesh. It's about what he purposed. That's what it all boils down to. And, you know, until you start getting in tune with what he purposed and how he actually exists, there, it's all theories, concepts, and opinions, which we all need to be careful with that and discerning. And uh, I'm going to leave it at that for the next speaker. I appreciate the time. And all praises to Yahshua. Thank you, Dr. Warren. And our next speaker will be the Dean of the Syracuse Branch, Dr. Patrick Turdison. Good evening. I don't plan to be long. I don't plan to. <laughs> uh, I appreciated what the first speaker had to say. I enjoyed it. Uh, I want to go right to the 19th verse. I just want, I want to pick up some things and then take my seat. Romans 3.19, now we know that whatever things the law saith, it saith to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped. That every mouth may be stopped. This is Paul talking. 
that every mouth may be stopped. You know? <laughs> There's things that people say to us mm. to try to get us to stop teaching what we teach, teaching on Zoom, teaching on YouTube, and you know, our, our, our reply to them is their mouths need to be stopped because they can't stop what we're doing. They cannot stop it. They cannot stop Yahshua's purpose from going forth. How are they going to stop that? That he was talking about. Read, please. That every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before Yahweh. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified Therefore, in his sight. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, by the deeds of this law, he just got finished talking about this, shall no flesh be justified. No flesh. I read, I was reading today about Buddhism. You would think that that would be such a, a wonderful faith. <laughs> a faith of peace. You know, a lot of that was spread through the world by war yeah. and by conquerors. And it's... <laughs> It's got four main pillars. And the basic idea of it is he came to the conclusion he was a rich man and he enjoying all the, you know, all the things of the flesh. And he came to the conclusion that there was no happiness. And that's why people kept getting reincarnated. Because they had to keep going through life because there was sorrow. And sorrow was caused by attachment. So you needed not to be attached to things. But he was teaching as though you had the power to do these things. Like not to be attached to wealth mm -hmm. or to lust or to, you understand? So he had four pillars of that. And then he had eight ways of going about doing that, which they didn't elucidate upon. But after I read all this about Buddha, you know, mm -hmm. I thought, you know, it's just like all these other religions out here. And they're persecuting these people called the Rohingya, which are a Muslim minority in their country, and killing them and trying to get rid of them uh, exterminate them, get them, get them out of their country. Hmm. Well, where's this peaceful, wonderful faith that you <coughs> teach? <coughs> See, you can say, well, I, I don't believe in Catholicism, I don't believe in this, I, don't, I, I believe in Zen. Well, look, check into that, you know. I believe in Zen Buddhism. Check into that. Check into these things. We've learned more about these religions since we've come to class than we ever knew about them before we were. I know more about Roman Catholicism now than all the years I was a Roman Catholic. Mm -hmm all the years. See? <laughs> Keep reading in there, please. 
Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified. No just, no faith can be. No flesh. No flesh can be justified by the deeds of the law. Period. That, that's that simple. You can't do these physical things. You can't do physical things of any kind and think that it's justifying anything in the flesh. Any kind of physical thing. Read, please. Therefore, uh, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of Yahweh, apart from the law, is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Now, didn't he talk about the law and the prophets? It's witness apart from the law is being manifested by the law and the prophets. Is that what it said? Witnessed by the law and the prophets. Witnessed by the law and the prophets. They're important. They are Yahshua's witnesses. That's why he said, I come not to destroy him, but to complete him, to finish him. Read, please. Even the righteousness of Yahweh, which is by faith of Yahshua the Messiah, which is by the faith, which is by faith of Yahshua the Messiah. That's that new covenant. Read. Unto all and upon all them that believe. There all is no them difference. that believe. You don't believe first and then get the Holy Spirit. You get the Holy Spirit and that allows you to believe. Now that's how you that's how that works. You just don't have the ability to listen. You just don't have the ability to sit down and say, I'm going to believe in Yahshua. That's right. And it's going to happen. You don't have that ability. He's got to give that to you. Yep. Along with everything else. Read, please. I'm not trying to make anybody mad. I'm just telling you like it is. He said he has to give you the ability to hear, to understand, to believe, to hear, to see. I argued with people for years before I came to class. And I came to class and you know what? That verse up there, my mouth was stopped. The very first class, <laughs> I came there to prove them wrong. My mouth was stopped. That takes a miraculous thing to stop my mouth. <laughs> First class. Who said that? <laughs> Go ahead, read. <laughs> For all have sinned and become and come short of the glory of Yahweh. All have all have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh. Read. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in the Messiah. Yeah. Oh, being justified freely by the grace that, listen, jump down to, oh boy, jump down to 27. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Nay, but by the law of 
face. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, all right, read, read another verse. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. Apart from the deeds of the law. I want to jump over to Ephesians, the second chapter. Mm -hmm. From one? Well, <laughs> I suppose that you can, yes. Because there's, there's just too much in this chapter mm -hmm. to try to omit stuff. But go ahead, read from one. Ephesians 2 and 1. And you hath he quickened. Now you, there you go, right there. You has he quickened. You see, that's, that's very hard to do if there's no you. If there's no you, then there's no you to be quickened. Something has to be quickened in that creature. That soul has to be quickened. That soul in you has to be made alive that was dead when you came into class. <coughs> Me too. All of us. He has to make it alive. That's what stops our mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what about... No, it stopped our mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Read, please. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. We were dead in trespasses and sins. Dead. Our soul was dead. Read. Wherein, in time past, you walked according to the course of this world. Yes, we walked. Read. According to the prince of the power of the air. Who's the prince of the power of the air? Satan. That's your buddy. <laughs> it's what Mitch always used to say. Yeah. Your buddy. Your buddy. This is your buddy. Your buddy. And then he'd call me buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I thought I was dead right then. <laughs> Read, please. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, mm -hmm. among whom also we all had our conversation in times past. What does conversation mean? Manner of life. Manner of life. We all had our manner of life in times past. That away, you know. Let's go out and drink whiskey tonight. We weren't thinking about going to a, a lecture like this. No. It was the last thing in our brains. Yep. Last thing in my brain, anyway. Read, please. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But Yahweh, who was rich in mercy for now, his love. Now, Yahshua, who is rich in mercy. It's just Yahweh is salvation. Yahshua, who's rich in mercy. This is just saying, this is just saying the same thing we just read in the third chapter of Romans. <clears throat> Read. Even when we were dead in sins. We were dead in our sins. And he died for the remission of our sins. Right. That's in the third chapter of Romans. Read, please. Hath quickened us together with the Messiah. By grace ye are saved. By grace. 
you are saved. There's not one single thing you can do. Not one single thing I can do. I don't get Christ credits because I'm Dean. Doesn't work that way. Read, please. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in the Messiah. Are we, have, have, have you ever sat in class and been in a heavenly place? Wait. And class was over and you looked at the clock and went, holy, holy Toledo. Class is over? You were in a heavenly place. And it wasn't the room we were in. You were in a heavenly place right inside yourself. Yep. Read, please. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Yahshua the Messiah. Everything's through Yahshua in this covenant. Mm -hmm. Read, please. For by grace are ye saved. For by grace are you saved. For by grace are you saved. For, in case you didn't hear me, for by grace are you saved. That's a mouthful. You could talk a long time just on that. Read. Through faith and not of yourselves. Not of yourself. Read. It is the gift of Yahweh. It's a gift of Yahweh. It's a gift. Yep. It's a gift that was given to us. He had it read. It was a gift that he chose Israel. Did they earn it? No. Were they great? No. Were they better than other people? No. It was because of his love for them. Mm -hmm. It was a gift. Right or wrong? Right. And it's a gift that he's given us. Not by anything we did. Read. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Not of oh. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Galatians 6 chapter, first verse. <coughs> Galatians 6 and 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fall. No, I got it wrong. Fifth chapter, okay. first verse. Galatians 5 and 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. Stand fast, therefore. Stand fast. Stand secure. Stand in the foundation you have. Stand fast. In what, Deb? The liberty. The liberty. Freedom. The freedom. The salvation that Yahshua has given you. Read, the, read it again. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty with which Yahshua hath made us free. With which Yahshua hath made us free. Mm -hmm. Made us free. Stand fast. That's all I wanted to say a few words because I got stimulated. I had no, no intention of even getting up. So... I'm going to take my seat. All praise belongs to Yahshua the Messiah. Thank you, Dr. Trevison. And our next speaker is the... Um, Vice President of the Syracuse Branch, Dr. John Cometti. <clears throat> I 
like to say thank you, um, and I'm continue on where the previous speakers um, left off, and I also um, enjoyed the comments of the previous speakers. Um, and as um, Dr. Warren, um, I also uh, came in through my now spouse and also experienced a couple classes and then was invited to a picnic on uh, down at Song Mountain, you know what I'm saying? And it was about an 85, 95 degree day and we're out playing volleyball and somebody says, we're gonna have class. And I was like, these people are weird. <laughs> Who gets sweaty and then goes into a room and sits down with one another <laughs> and teaches something about, you know, their creator. Yeah. Just, just a peculiar bunch of people, I felt, you know. So the next picnic, I brought bocce balls so we didn't get sweaty because <laughs> I kind of believed them after that. And a very similar experience was uh, a seminar in Poughkeepsie, which I would say the same thing to that coming back out of that trip that I knew that I would be making a commitment in my heart and in my mind um, to this great gospel. And uh, saying that, let's um, go back to the scripture where the previous speaker was. He started in 19, uh, let's start 1920, right around there, please. Is that the scripture reading? Yes. Okay. 319. Romans 3 and 19. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law. So Paul, again, is explaining, and not only has he explained the same topic to the uh, those that are gathered in Rome, but also to those gathered in Corinth, Galatian, and so on and so forth, because the message doesn't change, you see, nor does the Creator change. There's a purpose <coughs> that's going to be worked, do you follow me? Um, and none of our help is needed mm -hmm. in the completion of that purpose, okay? Mm -hmm. Go ahead now, where you are. That every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty uh -huh. before Yahweh. The, and the whole world will become guilty before Yahweh. Go ahead. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. So, you know, a lot of times we say that these things are easy. But in reality, without the grace that's been talked about and the mercy of our Creator bestowed upon us, it's a very hard thing to see. Okay? All right? Because I don't know how many times I would have been or had the opportunity to read something like this. And now I know why in my doct or my religion I wasn't encouraged to read these types of scriptures because it would have stimulated questions even in a carnal mind it's mind do you follow me because we do know the English language and when we read these things obviously now with the help of Yahweh it's quite clear that he's talking about bringing an end to a former way of worship and ushering in a new way and no matter where we look at Paul's writings, he's very adamant and continually spell, saying the same message. That's why they can't st stay or stop, you see, the truth from being, I'll say, exposed, you follow me, or brought out, you see. Um, now go ahead where you are, and we'll get going. Scripture. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in the sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. See, so then there's no way any flesh is going to be justified 
in this age by this law. It was never meant for that. And Paul's explaining what this law was meant for. Let's just say, for an instance, he got tired of listening to people from Adam all the way down blaming Adam for what he did. <laughs> you follow me? Let's, I'm just, just playing a little, you know. Yep. This is my uh, thing that I, I do with my job. A devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. Do you follow me? Mm -hmm. and, and try and take a look at and figure out what's truly going on. And I'll tell you one thing that I've learned in my business. There are more people that hang themselves with their own tongue that ever were hung by a rope. Okay? Okay, let me have Proverbs 8 and 20. And I tell this to people before we go into arbitrations and hearings. Shut up. Okay? I'll do the talking. They can't do it, though. They get in there, and they just start spewing. You follow me? <laughs> it's the nature of a carnal mind to, to just let that tongue, you see, take a ride. <laughs> mm -hmm. Go ahead. Proverbs 8 and 20. Right. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice. I missed it. Okay, what are you looking for? Life and death and the power of the tongue. Mm. Okay. Um... Mm -hmm. I thought it was 8 and 20. What a swore. No, that's because that's when he was awake. Hmm. Is it 19? Proverbs 18.21. 18.21. Proverbs 18.21. Uh -huh. Death and life are in the power See, of the tongue. Death and life, right, are in the power of the tongue. So, you see, we, we can save somebody and we can damn somebody with the tongue. And, I, and my point for even doing this is saying, I witness this almost on a daily basis. I watch people hang themselves with their own tongue. I got to say, why did you even say that? Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> why? Why would you even bring that up? What were you thinking? <laughs> now, go ahead and finish this, Devil. Eight, uh, 18. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, uh -huh. and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Mm -hmm. and, that's so, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You see, mm -hmm. so, so there's some fruit also that's coming. Now go back over where we were in the scripture. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get, I want to have um, whoever's not reading the scripture, please go back. Uh, the first speaker got Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. I'd like to go back there also, please. I think we're in 21. Yeah, we're about 20 or 20, I mean 21 or 22. Uh, Romans 3.21. But now the righteousness of Yahweh without the law is now, manifested. Well, now listen, but now, again, the English language would let us know that something changed, right? But now. But is just a little contraction between, you know what I'm saying? Whenever I even listen to these people and they say, but. Yeah, that was it. But. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Expel anything that came out of their mouth prior to. All right? And only believe what comes after the but. Because that's the truth, you see, that they're after or what they truly believe. The other is, yeah, I get it. You know what I'm saying? But. Mm -hmm. You got me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, but now the righteousness of Yahweh without the law is manifested, being witnessed. So then there is a righteousness. This is what I want you to see. There's a righteousness of Yahweh without the law, right? That's yeah. Right. So then there's a righteousness of our Creator without this law. Go on. Yes. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets. But now what's being witnessed by the law and the prophets? The righteousness. the righteousness of Yahweh, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Even the righteousness of Yahweh, which is by faith. Now, there you go. This righteousness of Yahweh 
cometh by faith, right? Mm -hmm. Got me? So the righteousness of Yahweh is by faith. So look at this. Let me put it to you this way. Mm -hmm. You want to be one once again with your creator? Isn't that what the purpose is? Mm -hmm. To gather all together in one? Mm -hmm. You want to be one with the creator? Faith. Faith is the way right. to be number one with your creator. Right. How do I know that? Because when I go back and look at the situation that the, the uh, spe first speaker talked about with Abraham, what established righteousness with Yahweh when it came to Abraham? Faith, Faith right? Yes. Now go over and get, oh shoot, I, I, let me get Isaiah 46, 9 and 10 first. Isaiah 46 and 9. Yes. Remember the former things uh -huh. of old. Yes. For I am Yahweh. And there's none else. See, so I am Yahweh and there is none else. Now listen, this isn't the first time this is talked about. He has his prophets, and I'm going to go over and pull a little bit about Elijah. He has his prophets continuously battling against Baal and others, right? Letting them know there's only but one, right? Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? So this isn't anything. This is by repet repetition. You follow me? Over and over. Now remember the former things of old. Go ahead. For I am Yahweh and there is none else. None else. I am Yahweh. There's none like me. There's none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. Because he was capable. Now, this Muhammad and this Buddha and the rest of them, none of them have been able to predict the end right from the beginning. Right? right? right. None of them. Nope. None of them have. Nope. And we sit here with confidence and faith that our creator that we believe in, do you follow me? Yahweh, that he is salvation. And that he has, you see, achieved the things that he has expressed to his brethren would happen when he said they would happen, mm -hmm. you follow me? Continuously. Mm -hmm. That's why he didn't destroy the law and the prophets. Because, you see, a lot has been set up to get to this point. Got me? Because he's declaring the end right from the beginning. So then, if there was a beginning, and this beginning was in the spirit, right? How's it going to end? In the spirit, right? Not in the work of some law, right? I got me? Because it did not begin with your creator asking Gabriel or Michael to put down a set of laws to govern the angelic, right? There were no laws, see, that were put in place in the beginning, so then we should know that a physical law pertaining to physical things isn't going to cut it. But it is only an example that we might understand something. Finish Isaiah. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. All right, we're going to try to dry that again because um, I was indisposed <laughs> momentarily. 
I knew if I touched that thing with the ch <laughs> even the thistle was going to come down the way it was up okay. there. So go ahead, Deb. Declaring the end from the uh -huh. beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Right. Saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasures. I'll do all my pleasures. Now, look, let's go and look at a couple of these types of events. We already talked about Abraham and the faith that Abraham had, right? So we've got to understand, even before we move forward, beginnings and ends, right? Because there's a multitude of beginnings and there's a multitude of ends, right? We got to know, just as um, the first speaker was showing you, there were laws, right? And there was a law. And we have to know the difference before we can address an issue, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? So then, in this age, we have a beginning. And now, in this physical age, right? In the physical, when the physical comes in, what's the first thing that we have? Basically, after the creation is created. The, if seven days come in, we have a law spoken in, right? That's what I want you to see. We got a law spoken in, right? Okay? So this law is, do not. Well, what was the first commandment? Be fruitful, Be fruitful and multiply. How are you going to achieve that one? Because the man didn't know the woman, right? right. And didn't know how to know the woman. Right. Until... You see, there was a transgression. And he came down from this state of existence that he was once in. Which the founder found to say it this way. Holy and innocent state. Right? Now, I don't know anything that's holy and innocent but the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but that's another topic. Alright? So here we have this man in a elevated state, I'm going to come over to here, you see, in an elevated state, finds himself in the garden, right? And now there's a law spoken in. And that's in the beginning of this age. Now go over and get me Genesis 6, I want to say 3, but I said Proverbs 8 and it was 18, so we'll... Uh, <clears throat> We'll have a little faith, all right? <laughs> yeah. Genesis 6 and 3. Right. And Yahweh said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh. Right. Now look at My spirit shall not always dwell with man. Strive. Strive with man, right? Because why? He is so that he also is flesh. Because he is flesh. Go on. Yeah, his days shall be 120 years. Yes, go ahead. Uh, wait a minute, I missed it. I missed it. They were giant. Uh, no, I, I'm looking for, great it's the end of all flesh. Um, has, yes. That's 13. 13? Yes. Okay. Okay, I'll pick it up in 12. Genesis 6 and 12. Right. And Elohim looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. So now, Yahweh, Elohim, looked upon the earth, and it was corrupt. What do you think he's going to see today? <laughs> really? Huh? Yeah. yeah. Huh? Sure. I want, I'm talking to you about the beginning of the flesh. Yeah. Now, I'm past the beginning of the angelic, we could have gone over had time permitted, and I would have showed you in the 12th chapter of Revelations what took place in heaven to bring that about, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the change up there. But what I'm talking about is what took place in the change that came about in the flesh. Got me? So here it says, go on. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Uh huh. And Elohim said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me. He said to Noah, The end of all, the end. Well, wait a minute, we're talking about an end. But we're not talking about the end of a creation. Do you follow me? We're not talking about this end. You got me? We're talking about the end of this age. 
60 in this second dispensation. That's what we're talking about. And he says the end of all flesh has come before me, right? So we have a beginning in that age of flesh, right? Coming in. Got me? And now we got the end of all flesh before us. That's a beginning and that's an end. You got what I'm saying? And that's represented in that second age. Then we come on down and we have another beginning of a third age. And we have an end of, the, of that age, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what we're speaking about right now in this scripture. Okay? If you don't think so, give me Romans 10 and 4. Romans 10 and 4. Uh -huh. For Yahshua the Messiah is the end of the law. Oh, wait a minute. So then what I'm trying to show you is you got a beginning of this law and you're going to have an end of this law. Right? You got it. You follow what I'm saying? And we got to understand beginnings and ends. Read where you are, Deb. For Yahshua the Messiah uh, yep. is the end of the law. Now look. Does that fit into this age? No, because the end of this age dealt with what? The end of the flesh. So then one thing we should know, if this was the beginning of the flesh, right? Then there's going to have to be an end of the flesh. And that's what we're talking about right now. The end of all flesh. You got what I mean? See, because you have... These dispensations, six, sitting in the physical. I remember one time we were trying to <coughs> line the ages, uh, uh, yeah, ages up with this tabernacle, as the first speaker had talked about being the of all thing, okay? And I always remember this. I don't know if you remember, Deb. And we were at Freddie's house. And he goes, well, why are you trying to do it that way? He goes, you're doing it wrong. You don't start, you see, in the age, you got to start in the dispensation because you're dealing with the flesh. Okay? And you have, uh, just to give you a, a type, I didn't really want to go this way. You have a death that we just talked about with Adam, right? Okay? That would correlate with... Um, that sacrifice and what's right behind it the labor or the principle of water so you got blood and you got water do you follow me now that doesn't work when you try and do it with ages and dispensations and Freddie said these simple words to me he goes you're trying to put something physical on something spiritual and it's not going to work that way See, because look at in my, my stupidity. I seen one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. I figured if it works that way, but you got to understand how to operate this pattern. You see? So I, I just wanted you to see that. So you've got to keep things in line and accurate as we progress. Okay, and I'm trying to show that there was a beginning of the flesh and there's an end of the flesh. Now, look with Noah, did all flesh come to an end? Huh? No, not really, right? There was salvation. This purpose, this plan. You have to know entails salvation. So Yahweh allowed an exodus for those that were found righteous in his eyesight. And that has already been said, was picked right back here. He knew that he would find grace in the eyesight of Noah. Right? You got me? See, there was salvation. So then, we still have a physical man operating, you see, according to his purpose. 
And when we had in Romans read that this was the end of this law, mm -hmm. all we had was the change from a physical to a spiritual. Do you follow me? See? The, the principles of water, uh, principles of circumcision, all those principles are carried over. Do you follow me? But the manifestation of these things is totally different. Let me have, um, let me have uh, uh, Elijah, um, I'm so, sorry, 1 Kings 17, start at 2. So do you understand what I'm saying about understanding beginnings? Because we have a beginning that deals with the angelic, but yet we have a beginning that also, or I should say with the spirit, and a beginning that deals with the physical. All right? But I want to express this law of righteousness, which is of faith. Now go ahead. And Abraham, you see, and Noah... You see, that's where we're at. We're with Noah now. And what are we doing? We're reviewing the former things of old to understand the end. See, go ahead now. So do you want um, First Kings Carmel? No, they... First Kings 17, six, or is it 16 and 1? What do you want? I want Elijah being commissioned to go eat and drink from the brook, and the ravens will come to him. Okay, that's 17. 17, right? Okay. Let me get it. Well, I can. Um, <coughs> Elijah, it's up early. First Kings 17 and 1, I guess. Yes. Elijah produced Yeah, go ahead. Out. Yep. <coughs> and Elijah and Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As Yahweh El of Israel liveth, before whom I, whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years. Hold on now. So, where are we now? Pre-flood, post-flood. We're in this now, right? Right? We're over here. And the law, you follow me, is in existence. Got me? Go ahead. Scott, continue, so there please. There shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of Yahweh came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. Uh -huh. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens. So there's going to be a time of a drought that's being talked about, right? Is this the first time Yahweh dealt, or the children of Israel dealt with a drought? No. No. Didn't they deal with a drought? You see, that brought them out of Canaan's land and forced them down into Egypt to be sold into slavery? That's why we're reviewing the former things of old, because they're continuously overturning and overturning. Look at overturning and overturning and linking together like a chain. You got me? See? Now, I don't know too many people that are capable of just taking a nice half-inch chain and ripping it apart, okay? So the when Yahweh links things together, they're tight, is my point. Go ahead here. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee them. Oh, now look at What sane man, without faith, and Yahweh is going to go to a brook, hang out, and wait for some black raven, right, to drop off meat. I ain't never seen a bird carry anything bigger than a worm. All right? Well, got me? Whatever he's carrying, I know it ain't my dinner. <laughs> because that little beak can't bring what I need to eat. So I don't know without faith any man that's going to go hang out by a brook waiting for birds to feed him. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I call that man a lunatic. 
<laughs> That's what I would, right? <laughs> now go ahead. So he went and did according unto the word of Yahweh. Uh huh. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, yep. that is before Jordan. Go ahead. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning. Oh, and them ravens, there they are. Right? They brought him bread and they brought him flesh in the morning. Go ahead. And bread and flesh in the evening. And they brought him bread and flesh in the evening. Go ahead. And he drank of the brook. And he drank of the brook. So in other words, his faith caused him to have trust in Yahweh to go up there and partake of what was going to happen, right? And Yahweh, once again, has and always has delivered on his word. Why am I doing this? Former things to understand the modern things. Go ahead now. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up oh. because there had been no rain. No rain. Go on. And the word of Yahweh came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath. Now, is this the first time the word of Yahweh came to a man? No. No. Right? Well, what are we talking about? Because, again, it came unto, you see, Adam in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. See, so it's not uncommon for the word of Yahweh to come unto a man. Right. But yet we think it's pretty weird. I did at that first picnic. Right? I didn't think some man really had the word of Yahweh. I, I really didn't. Go on now. Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. So I'm going to finish this story because I need to move on. So you're going to find out this drought lasts for three years. And there's a king, I believe it's called Ahab. 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 Ahab, okay. And his wife is Jezebel. Jezebel. Now Jezebel, and the reason why this drought happens and all of this is because Jezebel, <coughs> Ahab marries this pagan woman. You see, and she brings those gods of Baal into Israel and they are worshiping, you see, Baal, right? And, and Elijah now who flees, he's fleeing because he's, he's up there for his own, basically his own production because they're killing the prophets of Yahweh, right? They've always tried to stay the mouths of the prophets of Yahweh. Yeah. Hey, ain't nothing new. I'm trying to show you that it's nothing new. And I remember Dr. Allen saying, it don't surprise me. The only thing that surprises me is the who. <laughs> yeah, that's what he used to always say. Right. It's got to happen. Right. It, because, because it's already happened. Right. And it's just overturning and overturning. Mm -hmm. Got me? Yep. They've always tried to stay, you see, uh, the mouth of a prophet or the mouth of someone that was found in the righteousness of Yahweh, mm -hmm. which is by faith. Mm -hmm. Go on now. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm the one. I'm the one. I'm not, you're not reading. I'm telling the story. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then he says, I alone stand before you as a prophet of Yahweh. You see, right? And he challenges these uh, prophets of Baal to a competition, if I can say it that way. Now, remember, there's a drought. You'll find out, and I think it's the 18th chapter, that this drought lasts three years. Right? You got 18, one or two or something like that? If we, if we can't get it, I'll get it another day. What, what peg? Elijah went to show himself on Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, there is a point where it says the about first, the... First verse. Okay. Oh. That's what I thought. And the Go ahead. Year. Third, year. Yeah. third year, right? So I want you to see why three. Because that's how Yahweh works, right? One, two, and threes. So in the third year, you see, just like the Messiah... 
Because remember, these things are testifying to him. He's in his ministration for how long? Three years. See? It's, and the children of Israel are three days to and through, right? See? And that lamb was held over how long? I, I'm, I don't mean that. Go ahead here, Deb. Uh, we're not in... A lie. I'm, I'm telling the story. Okay, I forgot. I'm thinking you're reading. I keep forgetting. Uh, so here, Elijah puts this challenge on, all right? And he, uh, he challenges them and he says, for this day we're going to find out, right? We're going to find out who the true El is. Whether it be Baal or whether it be Yahweh. This challenge is still being, if I can say, challenged. Right? See? It don't matter what circle we go to, we are always defending the will of Yahweh. Being a prophet. And I'm trying to show you, you see, it's nothing new. That mouths have been tried to be stayed. As the previous speaker said. And it isn't going to happen. Right. See? And Yahweh has it already all worked out. All we need to do is have the faith, which is that righteousness, do you follow me? Mm -hmm. Of Yahweh. We have the faith and comfort to sit back and watch Him. You know how, you know how hard that is? Huh? Mm -hmm. You know how hard that is without the proper heart that was talked about? to be given to you and I, you see, it would be impossible is correct. You follow me? To have that kind of... So here, Elijah, you see, he, 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 uh, he, he winds up beating those prophets of Baal, okay, in the end. Do you follow me? And his sacrifice, you follow me? The fire comes down. Right. Is that the first time fire came down? Is it the last time fire came down? No, right? On this day of Pentecost, right? What, what did they wind up seeing? Fire. Uh, fire, right? Yeah, See? Fire. So I'm trying to show you the former things of old are tied in to the end. Whether it be three days or three years, whether it be rain, whether it be a law, whether it be drought. It's nothing, he used, Fred used to say this too, nothing new under the sun. You know what I mean? Yep. And, and I'll tell you uh, some other time what he did say. Maybe there might be one thing new, you know, but, but that's, a, that's another story. Um, so now let's go back over to the scripture. And I think you're in 22. So Elijah winds up winning that deal. Then you have, you see, when you're moving in and in the same age, you follow me? We have that um, old covenant, or that mosaic law over here being spoken in, right, to the children of Israel, right? That's the first time that law was spoken in. But it's not the first time the law of circumcision, which was talked about, was brought in, right? You got me? So then Yahweh had his chosen circumcised even before the law came in. Right? right. Follow me? See? So that circumcision that was under the law meant absolutely what? Nothing. Right? Now go ahead here. Uh, back to the scripture. And, and right. Romans 3, and I'll pick it back up at 21. All right. But now the righteousness of Yahweh without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and prophets. See, being witnessed, that's why we just did what we did. It's because of these things are being witnessed by the law and the prophets. And, and I, I only had time to go back and work one of those little events uh, with you right. to show you how that's happening. Now go ahead. Even the righteousness of Yahweh, which is by faith of Yahshua the Messiah. Right, which is in Yahshua the Messiah. Go on. Unto all and upon all them that believe. Uh-huh. For there is no difference. Right. Go on now. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh. Right, go ahead. Being justified. So look. All the way back, all have sinned. Right? So we had sinning even going on, right? 
and the angelic, right? Or there wouldn't have had been no need for a war back there. Now go ahead, Scott. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Yahshua the Messiah. Now there's redemption in Yahshua the Messiah. And we, it says in our book, have to believe that he has come, right? That is the faith that we need in this age and in this day. Do you follow me? And not the faith in the operation of some physical law to achieve righteousness. You follow me? Now, you can put all the laws you want on yourself. I'm not going to try and take them away from you. But please, don't put those laws on me. If you're comfortable doing what you're doing, and you're led, you see, and you have the new heart. I hope you're not being led by the old heart. If you're led by the new heart, you do what your heart leads you to do. And my heart will lead me to do what I need to do. Right. Do you follow me? Without a law putting on me. Because, you see, even the Gentiles did what was necessary before the law. Yahweh has got the thing under control, and that is the faith that we need to hold on to and be assured that He is the only Al. Do you follow me? He is the only Creator. He is the only one that is capable. Do you follow me? Because we have seen it over and over and over again when he gives us the eye and the ear to hear. I hope and trust you got something out of it. Thank you. Dr. Kamani, that concludes this evening's class. I'll have you all rise for the doxology. Appreciate everyone being here and people that tune in on YouTube. We appreciate that too. And now unto Yahshua, who alone is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the uh, before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise Yahshua, our Savior, along glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and for all times. So I'll say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.